Hello, I'm Michael Pierce, and this is The Human Condition. Today we're talking about what is heavy metals poisoning? So what is heavy metals poisoning and where does it come from? There are heavy metals that are part of the periodic table of the elements, and these are heavy metals. They're very heavy and they're metallic, and they occur in nature, they occur in the environment, and they also, they also are collected and concentrated in commercial industries. They're in manufacturing, and they're in the production of drugs and pesticides, they're in construction materials, and anybody that does destruction that, that you know, breaks down buildings or, or builds buildings or, or constructs things is exposed to them. We are exposed to them in the air, we're exposed to them in the water, we're exposed to them in food to varying degrees, and they're certainly more in processed food than they would be in natural food, although they can be in natural whole foods if the soil is not correctly balanced and it has the wrong type of, of uh, fertilizer, because there are cases of heavy metals being in fertilizer. For our purposes, heavy metals are, are toxic poisons, and there is a certain amount of normal heavy metals in human bodies. And the reason for that is there is a, a, a kind of a dull roar of levels of heavy metals around the planet that is normal. And you're, you're, we're not going to be able to avoid those. And most humans collect them and eliminate them in a pretty reasonable fashion. And so if you were to measure a person's amount of heavy metals, there'd be a small amount that they can handle. It's kind of like a small amount that they, they don't have a disease from, they don't have any symptoms from, and they can handle it. So that amount can be measured, and, and we can measure it at autopsy if we were to analyze a person's body after they died, or if we were to measure lab tests with them while they're living. And those would be tests of hair, tests of blood, tests of urine, tests of sweat sometimes, and uh, tests of saliva once in a while. We don't do that very often, but tests of stool. These are all different tests that we can do to measure heavy metals in a, in a human being and to understand what is going on with metals in and metals out, because we all get some metals in and we have to get the metals out. Some of us retain those metals and keep them in our bodies. Some of us get rid of them fairly quickly, and some of us are, are you know, kind of average, and we don't have any real problems. These metals come from drinks, they come from food, they come from drilling. If you, if you drill into the earth, or if you drill into metal and you have tailings, which are the leftover shavings of metal, you get exposed to that. If you're in the mining industry, you get exposed to air that has particulate matter like zinc or copper or any, any metal that's being mined can be exposed. In fact, most of the knowledge that we have in medicine about heavy metal poisoning in humans comes from the mining industry. In fact, most of the literature that doctors read when they study heavy metals has to do with, with miners that have been exposed to acute heavy metal poisoning in a mining situation where there was a release of a cloud or some kind of dust field or something happened and, and they breathed in a bunch of metals or they were somehow given metals. Once in a while, people ingest them and drink them and sometimes they get injected. But most of the time, they are breathed in through a cloud of air, or somehow they, they get ingested through poisoning, where a person inadvertently drinks something that has heavy metals in them, or breathes a heavy metal vapor of some kind. Volcanoes around the world continue to erupt, and they circulate heavy metals around the stratosphere. So the planet is bathed in heavy metals, and after volcanoes erupt, that type of debris continues to blow around the Earth. It gets tossed around by winds, even after it lands, it gets airborne again, and it can spread around the Earth. It's not unusual for us to get heavy metal exposure from Mother Earth and not from man-made substances, not, not solely from man-made substances. Also floods. There are floods that will happen, and when floods occur, floods frequently will carry heavy metals, and sewage contains heavy metals. A lot of time, sewage contains heavy metals, and the mining industry's raw product, when they first pull the, the ore out of the Earth, there's a lot of heavy metals in that. And then the, the further it goes up the, up the train to become pure, the less heavy metals there are. But, but very often, the raw pits of, of different types of mines, and we won't go into the different types of mines, but the heavy metals will be released into the local ecosystem through waterways in, in that way. These heavy metals are generally toxic to human cells. That means that they destroy enzymes and they destroy mitochondria, they destroy the ability for us to, to do biochemical processes. So one of the hallmarks clinically of a patient that has heavy metal poisoning is that they don't follow the rules. They seem weird and exceptional, and they don't fit the textbooks because they have weird symptoms that don't add up. When you give them substances and drugs and, and supplements and foods, they don't respond the way you would predict, and, and, and they don't respond the normal way to digestion and, and elimination. They just, they just have weird symptoms that don't add up. 
So whenever somebody's confusing clinically, one of the thoughts that we should have is, gosh, do they have chronic heavy metal toxicity? And that, that gets to, to my next point, which is that there are chronic and acute heavy metal poisonings. In medicine, the medical acute metal poisoning is, is perhaps life-threatening. Sometimes it's very serious. It usually shows up in the blood. It tends to be around for a number of weeks. And in my reading, it's about nine weeks after acute exposure. And then the body tends to take it out of the blood and stash it into bone to try to stash it into organs, to try to stash it into different compartments, we call them, compartments in the body, different organs at different rates. And different organs take up these different heavy metals differently. So you might have more in your kidney and less in your brain, or more in your brain and less in your heart, or more in your bone and less in your liver. So it's possible for that to happen. Some of these examples of these heavy metals are things like lead, mercury, cadmium. These are, these are heavy metals. And there's other metals that are not quite considered heavy metals, but that are toxic, like aluminum. And so there are these transition metals that are like, well, are they toxic or not? Like, is copper toxic? Is iron toxic? At high levels, yeah. But at normal levels, no, they're nutrients. You must have them. So there are frank heavy metals, there are nutrients, and then there are these transition metals that too much of them is a real problem and we need to eliminate them. We also should note that even though in humans heavy metals are toxic, in some of the parasites and things that live on us and in us, like bacteria and viruses and cancer cells and mold and fungus, that, that these organisms often use heavy metals as fuel and they are spurred on and given fuel by this. So there are times that a person may have what looks like a contagion or an infection or something, and they can't get rid of it with any kind of antibiotic or antifungal. They can't fight their cancer. They can't fight their fungus. They can't fight their, their, their mold, whatever it is. And, and we find that if we could somehow get rid of their heavy metals, they would starve those bad guys that are trying to hang on to their body. So how do we get rid of heavy metals naturally? We do get rid of heavy metals mostly through stool and through urine. However, there are a few things that we get rid of through sweat. And the most heavy metals and, and transition metals that we get rid of through sweat are mercury and aluminum. Those are things that we can get rid of through sweat. We also get rid of them through urine and through stool. But the general way that we would want to get rid of them is our bodies would push them out of our cells if we're chronically exposed to them after a long period of time and they hang around in our bodies. And it would push them out of the cells into the bloodstream. And then once they're in the bloodstream, hopefully they would end up at the liver, and then the liver would make them into bile and release them into the intestine. And then that green juice substance of bile would go through your intestine, and then you would lose it through your body. However, the problem is humans recycle their bile. We are very, very efficient at recycling our bile. So if we make bile, and we happen to have heavy metals in it, and we release it into our small intestine to digest fat and protein, and it goes through our intestine, and then at the end of our, our small intestine, we reabsorb it and suck it back in, which we're, we're prone to reabsorb like 94% of our bile, then we're just going to recycle that heavy metal. And we're going to bring it back to our liver and we're going to circulate it around our body and we're going to never get rid of it. So we've got to have some kind of binder. And there are binders like charcoal and binders like glucosamine and binders like, like kelp and binders like um, clay. There's a bunch of different clays people can use. There's humic acids and fulvic acids. There's all kinds of ways you can bind these heavy metals so that they stay in your stool and they go out of your body instead of being reabsorbed. Likewise with your kidneys. You, your body would normally have some heavy metals stored in your cells. Your body would figure out how to push them out and get those metals out of your cells into your bloodstream. Then it would circulate through your bloodstream, end up at your kidneys, and then your kidneys would void it through your urine and that would be very efficient. So we've got to make sure that our kidneys are working well, and that means having a good urine test. That means making sure we, we drink herbal teas and different things, like especially water is the most important thing, but making sure we have enough water, enough electrolyte, that we're not diabetic, that we're not infected, that we don't have a UTI, that we don't have a urinary tract infection, that we're able to get our kidneys to cleanse, and that we're able to produce a reasonable volume of urine, and, and that our urine isn't either too diluted or too concentrated. For chronic exposure to heavy metals, the best way to measure that seems to be the hair. For acute exposure to heavy metals, blood is the best way to measure it. But if your blood doesn't show heavy metals, you may still have it in your hair and you, you may still be quite toxic. Some people need a little bit of a goose to get those toxins out. They often do a chelation push test, which is they go to a doctor that prescribes an intravenous chemical that pushes or pulls that heavy metal out of their body and it comes out of their urine and then you find out that you have some extra. Now that can be 
That can be problematic for some people. It, it mobilizes metals and moves them around from a relatively benign organ to another organ that, that would be worse, like your brain. Or it can, it can fire up an autoimmune condition, or it can fire up an inflammatory condition. Or, uh, so we don't always want to do a chelation push test if the patient is unstable chemically or, or immunologically or neurologically. Those chelation methods of getting rid of heavy metals are great if you're acutely exposed because your body hasn't stored it already. But once your body's stored it, sometimes mobilizing it and moving it around rapidly can be a real problem. I've had a number of patients, even doctors that have come to me, that have tried to rapidly purge themselves of heavy metals, and they've actually created neurological conditions like numbness of their hands and feet, or brain fog, or, or what looks like a chemical concussion. It, it, they look like their, their, their symptoms present like somebody bashed them on the head, but they didn't. They just gave themselves a rapid chelation and they're, they're getting rid of metals too fast. It's coming out too fast and they can't handle the detoxification. I'd like to mention also that some people are genetically more prone to gather and collect heavy metals than others. And it's different for each heavy metal. One person might have more of a problem with mercury, but not so much with uranium. And another person might have a problem with uranium, but not so much mercury. So you have to be careful of that. And you have to know that as a person gets rid of heavy metals, you might find that in their hair, or there are other ways of getting rid of heavy metals like their urine or their stool that they have, they get rid of maybe two heavy metals for two or three months and then they stop and then they shift and their body in its infinite wisdom gets rid of a couple of different heavy metals. And so you'll see it, it change and shift that sometimes they'll be avoiding a certain pair of heavy metals or another trio of heavy metals and, and you'll often see it at two or three at a time and not all of them. And you'll see it rotate. So a person that has a particular pair of heavy metals that are, are in their hair today might not have that same one in their hair four months later when we would do a follow-up test. We also should mention that it's very useful to do urine and stool tests for heavy metals during the process of cleansing for a particular reason. Now, urine and stool don't give you a very good picture of heavy metal exposure because they only reflect how long you've been voiding that particular amount of urine. So you make urine over the course of hours. You know, since the last time you peed, you've made a little bit of urine. So that's only what you're measuring is since the last time you peed. If you have a bowel movement, maybe your last bowel movement was on average maybe 12 hours ago. A lot of times it's less than that. Sometimes it's more, but still it's only a few hours to a few days. So urine and stool gives you hours to days and blood is kind of like, well, what's whatever's circulating, but our bodies don't tend to leave heavy metals in our blood. It tends to sequester them into different compartments and different organs. And so that leaves hair. Hair tends to be one of the best ways to aggregate and measure the elimination of heavy metals through our hair shafts. And that is good for about 120 days, about, about four months. So uh, we usually do hair tests about every four months to understand what's going on. And likewise, it's important to know that you, if you have dyed hair, you're going to have a altered hair chemistry and you're not going to be able to get an accurate measure because the head hair may have almost always, if it's dyed, will have heavy metals in it because the dye has heavy metals in it. So if you have dyed hair, you have to grow it out or you have to use pubic hair. Now, you, you can't use chest hair, you can't use leg hair, you can't use body hair. It has to be head hair or pubic hair and you have to mark that on the lab test which kind it is so that the lab knows because each kind of hair has different chemical qualities to it. So how we get rid of heavy metals is another story. I've hinted at some of it now, but this was to explain just what is a heavy metal poisoning and what goes on with people. And it can give them some crazy symptoms. It can give them neurologic symptoms, immune symptoms. It can give them very confusing skin symptoms, digestive symptoms. It can give them really anything, thyroid problems. It can give them endocrine problems like sex hormone problems, adrenal hormone problems. It can mess with any system in the body and you don't know what it will do because each person is biochemically individual and they're different. So one person's heavy metal poisoning might manifest as sugar intolerance that gets better and improves with getting rid of heavy metals. They suddenly tolerate sugar better. And another person might have a, a hormone problem and their hormones get better. Their sex hormones get better after they get rid of the heavy metals. Another person might have lots of eczema or problems with their brain, like brain fog. And, and that gets better when they get rid of their heavy metals. So you don't know. It's not a one-to-one -one correlation. You just can't say heavy metals cause this in all people. You just can't do it. So you've got you to ask yourself, What's going on with heavy metals? How did I get them? Do I have a genetic tendency to, to keep them or to hoard them and not clear them out like most people? And am I clearing them out of my urine and stool? Because the doctor will compare your urine and stool clearance to see if you have too much of one or too little of the other and, and you're not getting rid of enough. And likewise, 
a wise doctor might slow down your, your, your cleansing and, and say, you're cleansing too fast. It is very possible to detoxify from nearly anything too rapidly. And so um, Leo Galland talked about that. He's a famous medical doctor, and he wrote several books. And, and he, he talked about that idea that you can judge a doctor by how delicately they manage a detoxification process with a patient and how gently that process is. Because if it's brutal, you're basically re-traumatizing the patient biochemically. And that is what is heavy metals poisoning.